all you folks out there on the internet watching us on YouTube today, this is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in beautiful San Antonio, Texas, deep in the heart of Texas. We are shooting today in our historic downtown store just a block from the Riverwalk, so if you're in town, you got to come and visit the oldest music store in Texas, family owned for over four generations. Why do I have two guitars in my lap? Well, aside from the fact that it's just an embarrassment of riches and I like being sandwiched between two 2,000 plus pieces of rosewood and spruce, uh, we're going to be doing a comparison for you today with two venerable guitars from Martin. Before we get to that, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to our videos. Uh, click on that little subscribe button, you know, the one that's you know, there, and, uh, and subscribe so that you can get the latest and greatest videos that we do. You'll get updated each and every time we upload another one of these little ditties. Um, also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and you can also follow us around, but we might uh, call the police if you begin to stalk. Just a forewarning. Uh, so, we've got two guitars here from Martin. Now, Martin is... Martin is Martin. CF Martin Guitars is one of the greatest acoustic guitar manufacturers in the world. They are synonymous with guitar. They invented the dreadnought for crying out loud. And this is two of their most popular models. What I have is a D28 and an HD28. Now a lot of people ask what's the difference between these two. A lot of it's cosmetic, but there's some structural changes too that affect the tone of the two guitars. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this model, what sets these two modern counterparts apart from one another, and play them so that you can hear what they sound like and determine which one you like best. It's all subjective, as they say. So, on this side we have an HD28, and on this side we have a D28. The HD28 gets its name from the herringbone trim that borders the top of the guitar. But it wasn't always this way. No, sir. As they say, way back in the day, we were sitting out there on the porch and we began to tell some stories about what the D28 used to be. So when Martin started and they added the D28 into its lineup, the D28 had a herringbone trim. It also had scalloped bracing. These are two of the primary differences that set these guitars apart along with a few others we'll cover in a moment. But the, H, the D28 was a scalloped brace dreadnought guitar, rosewood, back and sides, spruce top, with scallop bracing and that herringbone trim. Now, fast forward a bit, and at some point, Martin decides they're going to do away with the in, hand inlaid herringbone marquetry trim in order to cut costs and, and basically bring the D28 down to a lower price point. And then some people said, hey, what did you do with our wonderful, awesome herringbone? I can't live without my herringbone. I need some herringbone. And so, to answer those people, Martin introduced the HD28, adding the herringbone back to the model as it had previously had back in its golden era, pre-war line. Um, they also, at some point, on the D28 now, not the HD28, lest we get confused, on the D28, they removed the herringbone and they changed the bracing from scalloped 5 sixteenths bracing to a straight tapered bracing. What's the difference? Here's what the difference is. I'm going to set this aside to illustrate because I like to talk with my hands. That's a guitar joke. Okay. So a normal bracing, an X bracing on a guitar runs across in an X pattern crossing right below the sound hole here. There's some additional braces in here to support the top with all of the strength that the strings are uh, exerting on it, all that tension that it has. On a normal tapered brace, you basically have a spruce brace that just gets tapered. It just comes down to a thinner point at the end from a peak, which would be where the uh, braces kind of intersect. On a scallop brace guitar, the builder is going to go through and remove some of that material, kind of scoop out uh, some of that bracing. Now what this does is it allows the bracing to still be structurally rigid and yet a bit more flexible and let the top move more. Generally this is going to be associated with more volume, uh, maybe richer low end, but builders will go through and they will subtly modify the shapes of their bracing, the scallops, the position of the scallops, how deeply scalloped it is, 
how tapered it is, where the taper starts, and so forth. All of this shaping is done in order to shape the tone of the guitar. That's why no two brands really sound alike. They have their own unique signature tone. There might be things like we say, oh, a Martin has more low end than a Taylor, or a woodier tone, and a Taylor's articulate, for instance, um, you know, with a, with a lot of glassy highs, or it really cuts through, or you can hear every note, or uh, Martin has a lot of volume. All of these things that we are articulating are a combination of multiple factors. Scale length, type of tone wood, body shape, depth of body, width, whether or not it has a cutaway, that's debatable, and bracing. Bracing is one of the primary functions that's going to adapt the tone and really allow a builder to express their tonal philosophy, what they want the guitar to do. So on a modern D28, it's tapered bracing. On the HD28, scallop bracing. Outside of that, everything else is pretty much going to be aesthetics. On the D28, you have basic black and white striped by, uh, white binding, black and white stripe purfling going around the top, same with the sound hole. And you have a black pit guard. And on the back here, and whatever reflections you're seeing there, you're going to have this marquetry coming up the middle. Now, if we grab this one, we have the same white binding. We have the herringbone trim. It's got a tortoise shell pit guard because now we're getting, you know, having all sorts of pizzazz. We're getting snazzy. And then on the back, it's got this wood marquetry inlay going down, which is very different from the D28 we we're just looking at. So those are the aesthetic differences. Outside of that, they're spruce, they're rosewood, they've got mahogany necks, they've got the uh, volute, hand carved volute on the back of the headstock, chrome grover tuners, 111 16th nut. They're great guitars. They're legendary guitars, they're wonderful guitars, but they look a little different and they sound a little different. So now we're going to listen to what they sound like. We're going to play the D28, the modern interpretation of it, and the HD28, the modern interpretation of what the D28 used to be, and uh, let you hear the differences. Comment below and tell us what you think is best. Do you like the sound of the D28? Do you like the sound of the HD28? Which do you prefer? What do you hear differently between them? And if you're interested in either of these models, let me tell you, we ship all over the place. We have free shipping. We have 14-day uh, free trial period where if you say, this guitar is just not for me, that's all right. Send it back. No hard feelings. But we want to help these guitars find a good home, and maybe that home's in your hands. So if you have any questions, you're interested in these, contact us today. Email us. Give us a call. Send us a tweet. Come by and see us, and we'll let you even stalk us if you're going to buy a guitar. Now on to the fun.